I yesterday was one of those travel days, you know, weather everywhere. Didn't think I was going to make it all the way to Portland, and I did. And by the way, uh, you're in a different hotel room. I'm in a different hotel room. Somebody asked me once, Mike. They said, "Is that a virtual background?" I go, "Yeah, I got it off the internet. It's it's labeled a uh, hotel room." <laughs> <laughs> So just to let everybody know, we're live. It's Mike Weiss and Frank King. Uh, depending on where you're seeing us, because we're streaming uh, to every place that we possibly can. So it's going on Frank's direction, my direction. So um, you're seeing both of us. And we are uh, on together. We're having a big event on uh, Tuesday, the 19th at 2 p.m. That's coming up um, a few days from now where Frank and I will be um, sharing a wealth of knowledge for all speakers of how to build your business and take your business to the next level, make a bigger impact, charge more, you know, speak full time, make $180,000 plus a year, and then get linked in to do the heavy lifting to build you a really super engaged list, uh, almost on automatic. That's What's happening on Tuesday? We're here because we want to share some wisdom. Frank has uh, been doing what we all hope to do when we are uh, speakers. He's been speaking. <laughs> Imagine that, Frank. Share the, the the last week or so. Well, I'm glad you asked about the week, Mike. Uh, the last seven days, I've done three engagements, two corporates, one college. Uh, the growth on that, 18.3. So you made 18300 bucks in a week. In a week. Yep. That's very good. Yes. Um, but more and, important than that, tell us about like the impact, like what, what's going on? Oh, you know, I speak on suicide prevention as a workplace health and safety issue. And, and oftentimes when I speak, because I start the conversation on those things, people don't talk about out loud. They come up and they've got a story to share. And, and I have a mental health condition called chronic suicidal ideation. And I describe it. And every time I've spoken, there's been somebody in the audience who had that mic. They didn't know it had a name. They just thought they were some kind of freak and all alone. And invariably, they come up and they go, I, 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 I didn't know they had a name. I just thought I was some kind of freak. So my, my hope is, Mike, that I've actually been able to steer them far enough off the path to suicide that they'll live a, a normal life. And there's a little ROI for you. <laughs> Yeah, and then you gave me, uh, we, uh, we are in our uh, a mastermind with uh, our clients. We run every Thursday at noon. We have amazing clients, but you shared a stat yesterday that was, uh, it made my like heart drop in terms of uh, college and suicide. Yes, I spoke at a college, Eastern Illinois University yesterday afternoon. It was a foundation started by a gentleman 25 years ago who lost his son to suicide. And one, uh, er Three college students a day, every day, die by suicide. And I, I was a little nervous because he was in the audience. It's his foundation. He paid my way. And he came up and I was, you know, holding my breath as to what he would think about my presentation. He said, Frank, look, here's, you're exactly what we were looking for. We're looking, so we're looking at street level conversation on depression and suicide. Not, not somebody who's academic, not a clinician talking about this research study and that. Re you shared your experience. You were vulnerable. And, you know, it's possible we saved a life in the room today. Mm. It's incredible. It's, you know, we, we were talking about this last uh, live, you know, how I fit into the picture. You know, you, you're a speaker and you're in the business of speaking and making a big impact in the world and now making a great living and also working with speakers and helping them um, achieve their life goals, getting people on TEDx. You are the world leader of TEDx's right now. That's pretty cool. Share a little bit about that. I love that. Yes, I've done 10. Uh, I've got number 11 scheduled for October 14th, and number 12 scheduled for December 12th. So it'll be an even dozen. And all of them are on mental health, one aspect or another. And, and of course, I coach TEDx as well. And I, uh, I, the last TEDx I did, four of my clients were on the bill in the TEDx. So uh, it, it was a record for me. Um, the, yeah. can, I, can I hear something with you about speaking, Mike? Yes, please do. I got a, I got contacted by somebody. He's contacted me several times. I don't think he knows I'm the same guy with three different email addresses. <laughs> and, he, and he always asks the same question. I need a speaker agent. Somebody to book me to speak. And finally, I just said to him, look, dude, here's the deal. You're not really a speaker. 
you're a sales and marketing guy who speaks. And, and that's where the power of LinkedIn comes in. How do you get speaking engagements? Well, you've got to have quality conversations with potential clients to get speaking engagements. So you, if you're not into sales, you should not be into speaking. It's, it's, it's yeah. I mean, look, this is, uh, you know, two things. One, um, to your point, you, you know, we, we, we also played a video yesterday. Yes. With Keith Ferrazzi. And, uh, it was interesting cause Dove, Dove knows him. And I guess I, I haven't seen this stuff in a while. I mean, I know, of course, his book, but I guess that was from a long time ago. And he was talking about, you know, uh, relationship building, really, uh, what that looks like. And it was it was a great short clip. I think it was from a longer TED Talk. And the reason why I played it is because LinkedIn, it's the, it's the greatest opportunity probably we'll ever see in our lifetime to, to build – business relationships yes so it's is not a telephone and where you can hook up a dialer and cold call people <laughs> and interrupt them yeah you know there's plenty of people that do that on linkedin and you know it's it's one of the reasons why linkedin re restricted your ability to do outbound from 100 a day to 100 a week because people were getting pissed off mm -hmm. so i mean that's the good news is that you know they've put a blanket on that now who shines on LinkedIn? And it's the people that add value. And that's what LinkedIn's all about. It's not what I can get. It's what I can give. And particularly with our philosophy on LinkedIn is, you know, all of our clients, we teach. And it works really well for speakers because at the end of the day, you're teaching. You're looking to make an impact, whether it's in business or mental health or leadership or uh, fitness. I mean, there's, you know, there's a million categories of what speakers are speaking on, but at the end of the day, we want to inspire the audience either to stop doing something or to do something new. Um, and, and that opportunity exists, um, directly on LinkedIn and that people don't know, um, the structure and how to leverage it to really work in their favor. And that's why you and I came together I mean, we've been doing a business together for a couple of years and became very good friends and realized that, hey, um, you know, we, we actually can make a bigger impact to this network of global speakers and make a bigger impact in the world by empowering the speakers to to get out there more. And also part of what we're going to teach on Tuesday, which is your genius, is really understanding how to craft you, the conversation in a way that it is going to make an impact. Yes. And as you said yesterday, there's tons of information on the web. What we can provide in LinkedIn post after post newsletter after newsletter is not just information. It's education. It's actionable advice with every post, every newsletter. It's the, I think it's the heart and soul of networking, by the way, my idea about networking is, Give value first without without expectation of return. So every post, every newsletter gives value without any sort of expectation, no sales pitch of return. Hundred percent. Um, the other thing that's really, in, I think, very unique, um, and I know that it, like every business has its traditional route, you know, and the the uh, the idea is that if you don't morph and adapt and change you're going to become like the dodo bird extinct. So let's look at like the biggest example ever is the music industry. I mean, how stupid are, you know, all those executives at all those agencies when 20 years ago, the movement to digitize music was clearly out, out of the bag, <laughs> out of the bag. Yeah. And they tried to subdue the global movement of content and communication moving fluidly. Like that's pretty stupid in itself, right? By, you know, by law, by copyright. And like they, they battled for years and they just got their ass destroyed. That's an example of what not to do. What to do is to understand that, you know, the world's evolving and to figure out 
from each of our perspectives, like where things are moving and then how do I push myself to incorporate the new way of doing something. And so in the speaking world, I know, you know, I was uh, partnering with John Asraf for a while, who's a great speaker. He's on Larry King a lot. And, you know, the, the, you have a speaker sheet, right? And then you, you give out your speaker sheet and um, that's fine. <laughs> it's static and old. When I was in Wall Street, I started in 1987. I used to get in the office at like quarter to seven in the morning and it was mandatory. You front the cover. You didn't read every word, but New York Times, Wall Street Journal, um, Barron's over the weekend had to be done. And But the rule was as soon as the paper is printed, it's old news, yep. which that's okay. Whoa, your, your speaker sheet that's old news and you have the ability if you if someone's going to hire us to for you to speak then it's got to be a are you qualified no like and trust what's their vibe and okay your speaker sheet is going to say some of the stuff and maybe have some links but why not continually put yourself out there on linkedin with video consistently teaching and building the relationships and people, this is what we talk about, right? Be known before you need it. And we're going to talk about this on Tuesday too, because Frank's going to really talk about how do you, you you become the person for that talk. So if you become that person for that talk and you're known before you're needed, and then that next quarter, the association or the organization or the corporation has budget and the people responsible for booking want to have someone in that that category and you're the one that's known before you're needed and they know I can trust you, they've seen you talk, then you're going to be able to get the call. You, Right, Frank? Yes, I actually, the engagement I did on Thursday for the National Alliance of Mental Illness, Southwest Washington, I got a call from the executive director. She just got in the job. It was her first event. And I said, how'd you find me? She goes, find you, Frank. I saw you speak three different times. I, I It's my first event. I want you to be the keynote speaker. I said, she asked me what I charge. I said, are you sitting down? <laughs> she said, I, she goes, I don't care. I'll get a grant because you're the guy. That's where you want to be. You don't, you no longer want to be a commodity in the speaking, just another speaker on the same topic. You want to be the thought leader. The people come, they come looking for you. Correct. You know, and this is really the the fun part about what Frank and I have created in terms of the training, because we're going to go deep into this on uh, Tuesday, the nineteenth. See this this time I get the date right. Tuesday the nineteenth at two p.m. Eastern. That's a first, ladies and gentlemen. Okay. Mike got the date right. Underneath us, there's a first comment with a link that you can just click. It's free. Register, and then the good news is, let me share my screen as soon as you register. Well, not as soon, but very soon after you register. Where's my screen share? I'm going to go close my curtains, Mike. The sun is now beaming in. I'm having to move my computer every couple of minutes so it don't look like I were to fry. Hang on. Yeah. I'll be right back. Yeah. Do your thing. Let me find... Um, okay, this is uh, what I want to share. Okay, when you register soon after you register, and hold on, you know what the pay no attention to the guy behind the curtain. Yeah, the uh, we won't go into the whole story of why I'm in a hotel room. Um, not, I did not get kicked out of the family, so it's don't go there. <laughs> I <didn't hear> <laughs> Um, soon after you register, you'll get um, this sent to you. And this is our uh, workbook that we prepared. So you can see that we are prepared. Um, that you'll get to utilize during uh, the talk. So some information about the talk, about us. And then these are the worksheets um, to 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 have out and to start working on when we are um, working through our webinar. So you can see 
passion and purpose, pain points, outcomes, descriptions, pull, pull quotes, polish your offer. Like we're going into, you know, this is not fluff that, you know, Frank and I are putting together. This is some, um, some very useful information and formulas that you'll be able to put to use after you get done with the training. So I invite you to uh, make the move and um, right below us, stop sharing, is a link to register. And um, then we'll see you on Tuesday. Let's see, um, Frank, if we've got some any comments that uh, we have anything interesting in here. We got lots of chat, comments in the chat. Mike. We got a hey, Frank is one of them. Let's let's show this one. Yeah. I like this. Hey, hey. Frank <laughs> Darnell, thank you. I like that. Hey, <laughs> that's a good one. And then uh, we've got another one. Good morning. She must know that uh, it's you're on the West Coast. It's very good morning, early morning. It is, yes. After four hours sleep. Thank you. Donnell, yes, thank you. Donnell's all over uh, the comments. And then let's see. Um, well, Donnell's registered already. She's got the workbook. Uh, Sweet. Yeah, fantastic. Thanks, Donnell. Fantastic. And then we've got um, June. Woohoo. Yes. Glad to see two experts on one screen. LinkedIn expert Mike Weiss and TEDx record holder Frank King. Um, very nice. And uh, there's a there's a few other ones as well. Frank, do you you want to um, share anything about uh, what you like what you do when it's time for you to speak? Like you like I don't know what time the events were. Like you flew into the hotel the night before that morning. Yep. Like how do you prepare? Uh, oh, like what do you do? What's your routine? I think that's interesting. I, I, you mean prepare for the speech? Yeah, like so tomorrow. Say tomorrow you're going to speak at you know twelve noon for five hundred people on mental health. Well, what I would do, Mike, probably pre that was thank God bless Chat GPT. I would uh, I would make sure that I asked Chatty about the you know making my keynote relevant to the group to which I was going to be speaking. And I don't I don't take the text off of ChatGPT, but I take the ideas because it will tell me I'll put their website in my website in and say what's important to them. Oh wow! And so that I, I customize each speech, each each marketing email, each request for proposal is customized. And what it, Chat does is it it puts in there since I look at their website in and my website in, whatever comes out of it is talking about the problems they have that I can solve. Because if you're not solving a problem or hitting a pain point, they're not going to book you for a keynote. So it's it's very much customized to the individual group, the industry, um, and so forth. That's amazing. And then um, it, your speech is at 12. Um, what time do you get there? You show up. I get there an hour ahead, ahead, of, hour ahead of time because, you know, tech is not always, uh, I've got a Mac. We got PC. Oh, well, I've got adapters. Um, you know, you make sure that the uh you know the powerpoint's going to run as it should but in terms of speaking mike somebody said to me one time how do you get confident on stage here's the deal stand in your truth and you will be confident so you know what i speak on suicide prevention suicide runs in my family as does depression so it's all in my dna you could wake me you could, you could walk in this motel room mike wake me from a sound sleep hand me a microphone you're on and i give you 45 minutes <laughs> On suicide prevention yeah. without breathing hard. Yeah. Interesting. So let's tell um, <clears> one, <throat> one cool story about uh, the tonight. Uh, no, Jay Leno, some of the things that you did with Jay. Um, and then I'll wrap it up with uh, I'll think of a, some kind of cool story. And then um, we'll see everyone on Tuesday. But most people yeah. don't know this. It's part of uh, Frank's bio. You will when you get the um, when you register and you get the workbook. We have two sections on uh, each of our bios, so you'll learn a lot about each of us. But I love this part because um, I used to watch that show. 
Yes, wrote for him when he was the guest host, the permanent guest host, uh, the single permanent guest host. And then when he got the job for real, um, he kept a bunch of us on. And and a great guy, by the way, when I had my first open heart surgery, after I got out of ICU and was in my regular hospital room, the phone rings, first person to call me, hey, it's Jay Leno. Heard you had heart surgery. Good thing you didn't have it in LA. They take it out and leave it out. <laughs> Is and, he funny? And, yeah, he is very fun. I've seen him live a number of times. Um, he also is a great guy. I I have four books that I co-wrote on men's mental health. And on the last one, we were looking for a marketing push. And so I called Jay's assistant, Helga, and I said, do you think Jay would blurb the book for us? And he sent a wonderful blurb for the book that helped us, uh, you know, be number one on Amazon in several categories that day. Wow. Awesome. And more stories to come. Um that's great. I don't know if I have any real stories. Um, yeah, I mean, I got a lot of stories. <laughs> well, give us a give us a just a thumbnail sketch of the time you saw Vanderchuk, and, and and it changed like one or two sentences changed your life uh, when you when you were watching him. Yes, I you know there's I used to DJ in uh, high school and college back in the day when it was just vi vinyl. Um, is that you? Yeah, it was. Uh, that was. I don't know how that even popped up on my computer. And um, there was a song, uh, "A DJ Saved My Life." Uh, it was one of my favorites. "A DJ Saved My Life," and it's a whole song. And um, I now translate that to "A Speaker Saved My Life." So with <laughs> Frank, that's a that's true. "A Speaker Saved My Life," literally because mental health, but. The power of a speaker can shift your life. And that's what mm -hmm. uh, happened with Gary Vaynerchuk. So the one of the competencies of our company is we build online education platforms and write uh, course and curriculum. And so our, our big client was Digital Market, Ryan Dice. We wrote all their certification programs um, and ran them for a few years. And they had an event in New York City um, it was when they started doing agency events. But anyway, they 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 paid Gary Vaynerchuk's keynote speaking fee, which I think is like 50 grand or something. Um, and so we were there and I said to my wife, who's from London, let's go listen to Gary. I, I've been following him on and off for, for 20 years. You know, I'm a New York guy. He started out as a Queens guy, a Jersey guy. And, you know, I've been in the digital space in 2005. I had no idea what he's going to talk about. And we went in the room and it was, I don't know, a lot of people in the room. He spent an hour and a half talking about LinkedIn and why and broke it down. And then going through the history of social media, of every platform from YouTube to Pinterest to Facebook to Instagram to LinkedIn, um, Twitter, uh, TikTok, and the cycle of uh, how those companies evolve and the window of opportunity for every social media platform when it gets the critical mass of where you can arbitrage content and views. That's what it's all about. Views, but real views, not like hiring, you know, some people in China to get you 10,000 views on Instagram. Like that's useless, right? Because those aren't your ideal customer, but views of your ideal customers. So they get to know, like, and trust you and you get to indoctrinate them what you do, what you problem you solve. Those are powerful. Um, and that was what I was talking about. And, uh, I, I walked out of there and the thing that I said to my wife was that, you know what, I'm going to take back control. And that's a weird thing to say, but I was growing the ed tech company and I was the shoe cobbler's son because I've been in digital marketing since 2005 and I built the company with John and I've been on the top of the digital marketing world and Fusionsoft Internet Mark of the Year in 2012. But I sucked at growing my own company. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's so hard to do it for yourself. Plus, I was so involved with all the innovation and the tech and I just sucked. And then I hired some friends that were agencies that I've known for a long time. And I was like, really? Like, you suck too? Like, you know, I wouldn't have known that unless I paid you money and like I got nothing. And I understand the frustration because most of the people I speak to that are in the digital marketing world have had poor experience with 
companies building websites, companies doing Facebook ads, company, don't, companies doing funnels. It's just crazy. So when I stated I'm taking back control, it was my commitment to say, okay, I'm closing down all of the channels. I'm going just into LinkedIn deep. And I had the confidence because one, I, I trust Gary Vaynerchuk and I've seen him do it. I mean, he does $300 million a year and he's dominated every social media platform and now been an investor in some of the early ones, early investor in some of them. And two, I saw the movie before because when I was partnering with John from 2008 to 10, thankfully he loved Facebook. I, and uh, we ended up with a million fans uh, on his Facebook page, which really changed and helped accelerate the growth of the company. So that's the power of um, a speaker. And that's the power for all of you speakers that are listening. And the question is like, well, how do we get you out there so you get hired more often to, and make more money, raise your fees, because you should enjoy doing what you're doing and it shouldn't be a burden and then make a bigger impact in the world. And that's what we're going to talk about on Tuesday. So here's the parallel story, Mike. I'm a big believer that speakers uh, should be a thought leader expert. Uh, and they should, they should be joining the conversation in the client's head. And so two years ago, I realized I was doing a lousy job on five social platforms, social media platforms. And I thought, you know, I should probably go deep on one. So apparently you were listening to the conversation in my head because I got an outreach for you that week. <laughs> hey, watch this little video, Frank. So it's a 45 minute video. I, I couldn't watch it, but I had the sound on in my car as I'm driving to a gig. And you're talking about um, talking about LinkedIn and talking about going deep, not wide. And it just, it, it literally joined the conversation. I thought I should be doing that, but I didn't have a vehicle for it. And then all of a sudden you pop up on LinkedIn and that's what we want for our speakers is. And so that's the whole idea about being known before you're needed. You're there five days a week. You got the newsletter. And then they suddenly realize they need you and you're top of mind. It's a radio principle. 3% of people listen to the radio in the morning on the way to work, listening to a tire store commercial. Only 3% are going to need tires that day. But you know what? The <laughs> other 97% sometime are going to need a tire store. And that's why they do that. It's the frequency. So it's top of mind. And you may not even remember where you heard of them. But if you're top of mind and you're known before you're needed, you're more likely. And the, the process is joining the conversation. If you go to my web pages, um, I have them segmented by industry. Uh, mentalhealthcomedian.com forward slash agriculture forward slash, you know, uh, construction. Had a, I always ask, how'd you find me? Well, Frank, you know, we're osteopathic association. And on a whim, I thought, I'm going to type in suicide prevention speakers osteopath. And she goes, oh, my God, there is one. Uh, I, I joined the conference. She saw exactly what she was looking for. She didn't know that I spoke to agriculture, construction, that I coached TEDx. None of that. All she saw was exactly what filled in the blanks in the conversation going in her head. Powerful. And also, I love also, Frank, you've been on radio for, you know, uh, many, many years. And you told me that... Um... A radio ad needs to be heard how many times before it registers? It's, uh, I think it's six or seven times. And, you know, the DJs, because when I first started radio on, you know, behind the mic, I said I was really getting tired of that commercial. And my boss goes, look, about the time you get tired of hearing it, they're just now hearing it. Exactly. That's where consistency comes in. All right. I think we're, uh, we're good, Frank. It's uh, 1042 on Friday, September 15th. Um, Tuesday, I must have gotten the date wrong then. Tuesday. Boy, there's a surprise. <laughs> Tuesday, September 15th. Yeah, Mike has trouble with the calendar. September 15th. All right. Am I getting this date wrong again? I can't believe I did that again. Tuesday, the 19th. Tuesday, the 19th. That's this coming Tuesday at 2 p.m. Uh, you got um, an hour and a half of Frank and I teaching. And if you go and click the link, you can see the topics that we're going to be covering. Register. You'll, uh, you'll get some reminders. And also you get the workbook. And then show up with an open mind and a pen and a piece of paper for the workbook. And, you know, our objective is to have you win. 
and we're going to go over topics that you can utilize both from a strategy on speaking and on LinkedIn that's going to get you on your way. Yes, and unlike a lot of webinars that are, you know, it's not, you're not going to get pitch slapped over and over and over again. In that time, there are actionable items, actionable information on building your speaking career, finding your lane, finding your ideal clients, and why all that's important. So you'll, you know, that you, it's, you know it's, it's just an extension of our stuff on LinkedIn and the posts and the newsletter. It's educational. Correct. And then to the extent that you want to go a step further and have some of the stuff that's necessary done for you, we're going to also provide you uh, some information to figure that out as well. Oh, I love those three words in marketing. Done for you. <laughs> so do I. So do I. Well, and I should tell Mike that the Done For You newsletter that your company is doing for me twice a month, um, I'm, I'm getting an average of 1,000 new subscribers a month. I, I'm at 3950, 3950 since April. Yeah, and it's amazing. We're going to go into the secrets of that and the actual newsletter funnel to drive conversations and sales during our talk. So everyone have an amazing weekend. If you're um, celebrating Rosh Hashanah, the new year, um, may you have an incredible new year filled with joy and happiness and health, obviously. And I like to say, let's all focus on having our best year yet. That's my sign off. What do you got, Frank? Go. Okay. <laughs> Thanks for tipping. Thanks for the tip. Uh, bye, guys. We'll see you on Tuesday. See you.